Hey everybody, what's going on? Alan here. Welcome to Gibson's Garage and Speed Shop. Is that better than Gibson Garage Speed Shop? I'm thinking about changing my name to it. Today we're working on an 03 Dodge Neon with a 2.0, not the cool 2.4 dual overhead cam. This is a single overhead cam, 2.0. We're going to do the water pump and the timing belt kit. I know there's a bunch of videos out there, but I haven't done one. So you guys can see how I do it. And it's uh, what it looks like is pretty much the same way as everybody else is doing it. But uh, maybe I'll show you guys something that uh, the other guys aren't. So let's just get right into it. I have to use my phone for this one. My uh, GoPro is uploading stuff and it's taking forever. I, I hate it. I don't know why it takes forever. I hate it. But look at this cool thing. We got ourselves a nice little beater today. Someone, uh, not this owner, but the last owner, went in and put a cool little Mishimoto radiator. That's pretty cool, man. I'm jealous. I want one. I got an aluminum one. It's just not Mishimoto. Went through and got the Greddy. Is it Greddy? Or am I just assuming G plus performance parts? Maybe that's not Greddy. I feel like Greddy would say Greddy. Okay, well, we got some silicone hoses. Some wire loom. Cool, huh? Intake with... Oh, oh, they updated it to hot air intake. Nice, very nice. All right, so first things first is getting the car in the air. You're gonna need to remove the tire because you gotta get to the crank pulley in there. Uh, again, I'm doing water pump and timing belt because, you know, sensuous, right? Now this thing needs motor mounts all over the place. All of them need to be replaced probably. We're leaking oil on the oil pan. This thing's never been maintained. <laughs> they just. You know, it is what it is, I guess. Um, first thing we need to do is just get this motor mount out of the way. And then we can remove the accessory belt and figure out how we're going to get that motor mount out there. All right, so you're going to need 18 mil and 15 mil for these first two motor mounts. For the alternator belt, we're going to have to loosen this bolt and uh, screw in this bolt to let the alternator go this direction so it'll relieve tension on the belt and we can pull that out. So I think that's going to be a 15. That's going to be a 13 down there. Do I even? That's like super loose. Oh, I don't even need a tool. We just want to unthread it enough to create enough slack for the belt to come off. And there's the swivel bolt. Okay, so you don't actually need to put a wrench on the back. This piece of metal here, it's going to lock up against the alternator. It just, it had to spin from this side, from when it was tightened, it's gonna swing all the way over and hit on this side. When it loosens, it has to swing all the way over before it hits and, and uh, against the other side. So just keep going and then it'll break loose eventually. So I think just a couple turns should loosen it up enough. Oh yeah. Loose as you goosh. Can we get that uh, belt off? Is it loose enough for that? Next, we got to get this bracket off here, and there's two bolts behind the power steering pump pulley, and then there's two bolts sitting in the recesses in there. That's a 15, and okay, <laughs> it's tight. There's another one over there. 
I'm gonna have to get a special wrench for that one. And not enough room for the special wrench either. It's not gonna easily fall out. Dang, that one's tight. The other one was like a loose. These four bolts, look at that bottom one, it's not even tight. You can see an air gap. You gotta take these four bolts off, support the engine, and then you with the jack, and then let it down. Maybe I can sneak the bolts out. All right, we're gonna skip to pulling this off so we can get out of the way and get just a little bit better view and access to those bolts. Uh, if you noticed when I took out that bolt, did you notice it had a wobble? And you can see here that it's dug in on one side pretty bad. My guess is that they used a three jaw puller like this and the bolt in the middle slightly backed off to pull it out. And that bent the head of the bolt. That's my guess. You're supposed to have a Chrysler style harmonic balancer puller that has a rod that you can stick in there. And then the Chrysler puller sets up against the rod. And you bend the rod, you don't bend the bolt, this doesn't happen. But I don't want to go to the store and get the Chrysler puller, so you can put a three jaw puller in there just by turning it sideways. I can get two of the jaws in by turning it sideways. And then the third one I gotta bolt it on. And then for this pole, for this rod, so I don't slip off, I'll just stick like a socket in there over both pieces and it'll capture the rod. Eight millimeter socket, three H drive, three jaw puller. Now you're not supposed to use impacts on pullers. Is it coming off? No idea why. So if you're wondering, the rod is from this lawnmower spark plug tool. I got a couple of them. And look at that. Now we can actually see signs of coolant leaking. Well, just that drop there, I guess. I'm assuming all this other moisture is from it too. But that bolt right there that I said was loose, had an air gap. It is not loose. It's cross-threaded. So I'm having a heck of a time trying to get it out. Because it's just cross-threaded. Right? It's super awesome. And then there's the other bolt there. That one's the 15. I think these are 15s and these are 13s over here. So that's a Torx 55 um, with more power. Oh, there we go. Okay, phew. I was stressing for a second. Now this thing is as loose as a goose and it will drop and I can get these bolts out of here and wiggle it up and down a little bit. So I think I'm just gonna have to go down to get at least two of the bolts out. Just enough to get this bolt by. Well, did I go enough? Running out of finger room. Oh, yes. All right. Now for this one, just keep jacking it up, the motor back up, till you hear something crack. Then you're good. I already broke that loose. You know that finger ratchet 
that you thought you'd never need you see in the store like that's a gimmick <sighs> wish i had one right now Ooh, right above the frame but below the pipe all three bolts are going to this bracket for the power steering pump through the pulley so i got one more through the pulley to do and i think that's it yeah i can feel it okay there's also a bracket in the back side that is bolted to There we go. That's in there deep, huh? We have to take this cover out first. Uh -oh. Well, I don't know how that happened. Just keep dragging, jacking the jack up until you hear something crack that goes. Uh, don't tell me you're stuck behind the pulley. Mm. We'll undo the two bolts that are left out of this power steering pump. One bolt's missing. So we'll take off the two and uh, we'll loosen the one, or take off the bottom one and then just loosen the top one and that'll let us slide it out of the bracket. That's meant to be there so you can hang it and then go through and put in the bolts and tighten it all up. bracket and tensioner oh the tensioner shattered look at that what how does that even happen did I do that no it works still okay oh, there's 
there's another 8 mil bolt on the bottom somewhere. There we go. Why are you falling over? Stay right there. There you go. Every bushing on this thing is shot. All the motor mounts. Okay, so just the two 8 mils at the bottom and this should come off. Oil leak. I right, put the bolt back in and now I can turn this until we uh, line up the timing marks. That's better. There's a little notch here, it's hard for you guys to see, and there's also one inside on the spoke too, but there's a line up with this line here on the timing cover. Well, I got the motor mount out, but it is trashed. I know there's supposed to be some, like there's like a window there, which is pretty common, but I don't think it's, in this case, it's not supposed to be separated. And it's separated all the way, three sides, on both sides. It's pretty close to just falling out. Let's see if I can just break this loose and if it'll loosen the tension. Now I gotta get that Allen wrench and pull it out of the, oh wait. Never mind, it just gave up. There it goes. I think I still need to kind of hold it out of the way and tighten that down. Hey! Oh my god, I thought I was getting attacked. What is that? Crazy little ground monster. What are you doing over here? Hey, come here. Okay, I just remembered. I don't need to worry about the tensioner because it's being replaced. So just, we're gonna carefully just peel this stuff off without turning the crank or the cam, hopefully. Hopefully. Okay, good. You never know, those valves are under pressure. The valve spring might force that thing to go twang. But as long as you put it on top dead and then you move it right back to the timing marks, you should be all right. All right, looks like a couple of eight mil bolts holding on this back timing cover. And then I'm hoping like I can do what everybody else did and just peel it away far enough to get to the water pump bolts. All right, so I think we gotta take this bracket off to get to, to let this thing swing out far enough. Thought it was stuck behind the cam gear. It's like, no! Okay. There's some wiggle room. Oof. Oof. Why do you do this to me? There's one 8 mil bolt I can get to here. Maybe that'll help loosen it up a little bit. A little better. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Yep. Cracked. We're perfect. Let's get this water pump off. <sighs> it's a mess. So here's a new plan. We got the, a wrench in the spokes, is financially speaking. So we're going to change it up. Since this belt doesn't even look that old, doesn't look hurt at all. Grease. That's grease. Okay. It's a Gates belt. No cracks at all. This thing looks pretty brand new. And this tensioner still feels new. You can. Oh, how do I do this? Okay. So you can spin this and it still feels stiff. Like it doesn't free spin. That's actually a good thing. It's got still freshly packed grease in there, right?
if you spin it and it sounds like a skateboard wheel that's a bad thing so we're gonna save some money on the kit and just do the leaky water pump because of that guy that's an ex excuse me that's an expensive part and the motor mount is trash so the motor mount and that mess things up for us but luckily we get to save a few bucks with that and uh yeah i feel comfortable with that really because it's gates and the, the bearing is my telltale in my opinion right so that thing works all right okay you're not going to want to watch this part That was way less painless than I thought it was gonna be. And we're only like, we only moved like a tooth. Perfect. See, now how hard was that really to remove this can? Now, we can take this cover off and just do the water pump the easy way. Know what I mean? Oh, here. You guys can't see, but yeah, that's that second bolt. Now that is easy. Wow, that is a lot of work to get to the water pump. And almost all of this needs to be replaced. That tensioner, you can only get it attached to this. So that's cool. That's like $200. This one's blown out, but it's up top, so we can wait. This one, well, there you are, is down in the mess. So this needs to be replaced now while we're in there. Otherwise, it's like the same whole job again just to do that motor mount. And the tensioner, of course, we're going to keep. Because that makes sense. The belt is brand new, dude. It's a brand new Gates. And the tensioner is not a skateboard wheel. So, we're going to keep this, save a couple bucks because of that. We're going to be spending it right back on that. Okay, now that the plastic timing cover is off, front and rear, it doesn't look like it's the water pump that was even leaking. I think it's the water neck here. You can see these stains going down, and it's wet way over here. So, I mean, unless, you know, if it was leaking from the water pump, It'd have to be leaking from like, even if it was leaking from here, it'd go straight down. Maybe it'd go that way. It's hard to say, but it looks dry immediately underneath the water pump. What does that look like to you guys? So I think at this point, we're just gonna do it anyway. It does look original, because it's got like this clock stamping on it. And I think that's something only, only in manufacturers do. Yeah, that thing's sealed good. There's nothing seeping out of that with all the bolts out. Got a container down there, so here we go. Plastic pieces. Uh. Here's what we got. This is our culprit. These metal inserts are sticking out further than anything. So should I just try and sand it? I don't know if you guys can catch it on camera, but you can see the smoothness around the bosses. And uh, it's still not touching, you know, the top and bottom yet. <laughs> so 
lot closer. So as close as I can get it, it just doesn't seem to get any better. Okay, so it's good we're replacing this pump anyways. I don't know if you can hear it over the weed eater, but it sounds like a skateboard wheel. It could be worse. It could be worse. It's not completely gone. There's no play, but it's just pretty loose. And I do think it's the original one of the car because of that and the stamping there, that clock. Yeah, here in the sun. I think that's something only dealerships do. All right, mounting surfaces are clean. Bingo. And then this one's pretty good. So we'll, uh, I'm gonna go return the kit here. We'll go return the kit and just get a regular water pump. And uh, the other parts won't be here till tomorrow morning. So that's gonna be it for today. We'll see you in the morning. Okay, old parts out, new parts are here. This guy, I gotta use the top piece from the old one. Thankfully that's in good condition, right? Cause that would suck or what if I didn't even have this piece? Anyway, got the new pump, no timing belt of course, cause we already went over why. And I've got the motor mount with a new bolt. So that's cool. We'll take all that. Those are Duralast lifetime parts, Duralast lifetime parts. This is dormant though. And I don't think it's lifetime. I think it's a couple year warranty, but uh, it's all, we had no choice. We had to get this part here as soon as possible. The other parts were like days out. They said Friday. So that's not an option. She needs her car, so. And we've got this thing <coughs> sanded down nice and flat. Eh, eh, eh. Nice and flat with a brand new seal that sticks way out there. Brand new thermostat. So hopefully this won't leak anymore. And uh, we can start putting all this stuff back together now. All right, so these are all blind holes, these screw holes for the water pump which means they don't go into any area. They bottom out. There is a back to these holes. But at the same time, we've all heard horror stories of people tightening like head bolts and then there being water in there and then the water doesn't compress, right? So it cracks, cracks whatever out. We're gonna clean this up too after we get the pump on. Well, you don't need, uh, usually, need sealant for O-ring style gaskets, but when they don't wanna stay in place while you put it in there, you might not have much of a choice. So you wanna make sure you use Ford sealants on your Dodge. Okay, this is gonna go all in the faces.
All right, got it all cleaned up. Looks pretty good down there. We should be able to identify fresh leaks now in the future. You do good for your home. There you go. And I think there's at least two on the bottom somewhere. bend smaller than the pulley do not use tools to pry onto pulley oh, I don't know Spongebob okay let's get that uh, camshaft on there make sure you line up that dowel pin it was pointing straight down for the most part and we are still dead on Cool, good move. Come on, baby. Come on, Cletus. You'll be walking over here. You should be limping back. Why won't this go under there? What the heck is that? It's just very little clearance. How did I get it off? There we go. You gotta line up the teeth just right because there's very little clearance in the casting. Okay, that's still lined up at the bottom. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's tighten her. Arrow says, go that away. Dead on, nice. That's two rotations. Now we can tighten this. Now that the belt's holding it still for me, I can just give it a little brrr. And now I wanna to try to slide in this motor mount. Ooh, that was way nicer than I thought it was gonna be. It's hard to get out. Uh, there's still the issue of that one stripped bolt down there, but uh, you know, there's only so much I can do in a tight space. There's no tools for anything like that, so uh, in this space. We'll just go back to cross-threaded. It's just, just as good as Loctite. Got a hooks over the top and then you go down to the bottom and get those two little bolts. as ever all right so before I tighten those three big bolts I'm going to put in the power steering pump and bolt it all up here and there to kind of help you know make sure this isn't there or there in the wrong spot just slightly but also first I want to hook this up while there's room to and 
now I understand how the last one was all crumpled up in there. Because good luck with that. And now we know why it had a bow. Because that's a thick gasket. And those are going to bottom out on those brass inserts. So, no point in over torquing those. There's still a huge gap. And you can still kind of wiggle it. So, that's just a crappy design. If it were me, just like I did to my Magnum, I'd see if I can find a, an aluminum, a billet one of these. That would be ideal, I think. Oh, let's not do that yet. I'm gonna set this in there. Oh, we're in. We are in. Insert these three bolts through the pulley, get them started, and put the two bolts that were there in the back. There should be three, but I only had two. That's cool. See, that's not lining up. You need all this loose so you can get all this started. Get the ones in the back all threaded in and started. Yeah, that would have been difficult if I had already tightened that. Right back here, so you only have two bolts. The hanging bolt and then the, there's supposed to be two more securing bolts, but that's all we got. So now that everything's started, I can go through and tighten all of them. The three there, the three here, and the three back here. So I don't want to suck that bolt up just yet. I want to try and get this started first. There we go. Oh yeah. Now we can tighten both of those. Maybe not yet. Maybe I'll get the top one started too, just for S and G's. But that's last. First, I need to get this on and uh, get the accessory belts on. I was able to push that in far enough to get the thread started. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to get something to stick it there. Found something. My pinky's tingling now. Oh, that's fun. <sighs> Sorry guys, it's too tight a space for you. But you get the idea. We're gonna keep doing that. Looks like the belt shrank while it was off. That's interesting. We're gonna come and tighten this tensioner nut up again. And then tighten both the pinch bolts, tensioner bolt and pinch bolts. Well, since there's no threads in this, uh, for some reason, there's not threads in the top of this. And this is a pointed screw. I'm guessing that's probably how it was from the factory. So we're gonna set it there in the hole and cut our own threads. I just gotta drop the coolant in now. And if uh, I got concentrate, 
So these things are really helpful to help you measure it out. You just fill it up once with this. Then you fill it up once with water. And you've got your 50-50 mix. And you just keep doing that, you know, if you need more. I get so hot it melts the paint off. Yeah. I can smell the the disc, the burning disc. So that could be a gallon right there once that goes in there. Okay, it's all buttoned up. Well, as to the water's chilling in there, I'm gonna start it up and see if it sucks it down. I hate this part. Clutch? I don't know what to do with that third pedal. running into each other okay well it's running but it's not happy Sounds like something is rubbing inside the timing cover. That's obviously no bueno. Uh, so I guess I gotta take it all apart again and try to find out what's rubbing. That's fun. All right, I just took everything apart, back apart again. It's nighttime now. We're gonna, my theory is that this plate here timing cover gasket or whatever you want to call it is pushing it's so thick that it's caving in the plastic and making it touch the uh, tensioner there I think is what it's touching because it's very close Just gonna, I'm gonna rip the gasket off of that timing cover and put it all back together. Okay, we're gonna peel this gasket off, see if that, uh, well I know that's the issue, but is peeling it off going to fix the issue? Yeah, maybe. Okay, so I got it all bolted back on, just kinda, just far enough so I can see if it's gonna still make that noise. Yeah, yeah. The awesomeness just doesn't stop on this thing. Dang. But it's running. It's running, guys. Well, I mean, it was running before, but it's running without squeaking now. That plastic is... It's got a crack in it, and it must be warped from the years. It's probably original. Just like the water pump. I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for sticking in there, hanging in there this long, for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Please hit that super thanks button down below. And, um, yeah, we'll see you next time. There it is, all back together. No more squeaking. She's ready to go. 03 Dodge Neon timing belt and water pump thermostat. Oh. And if that's not cool, then, well, I don't blame you. <laughs>